You know, lots of planets have a north, but not everyone has a north guard, which is the game that we're throwing chairs at today. Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This is where we take a game, we tell you if it launches, how it performs, the graphics and the controls, and then we tell you how fun we thought it was. And this all gets rated on an arbitrary metric based on lawn chairs, because why not? Um... This game was developed by Shiro Games. You can pick it up for around $29.99 USD. Uh, it's developed on the Heaps engine, which I had never heard of, but it's interesting. And what is it? Northgard is a strategy game based on Norse mythology in which you control a clan of Vikings vying for the controls Vikings. of a mysterious newfound continent. Uh, Pennywise bought us some copies for this. And also, yeah, Castlevania, man. Lord's man, Shit. I'm just saying this guy, I think this game is a ripoff of... Um... <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I, I came in expecting like a strategy game, and then I had to fight like ice giants titan, with like a no, whip. Like, what the hell? Yeah. Right? I was, I was, I was, I was, I was very confused. Um, <laughs> there, there we go. All right, so let, let, let's let's get into the technical aspect of the review. Then, how did it function on the Ubuntu's? How did it function? We got three distros. The developer's worst nightmare. Um, over here, I'm running a very bog standard. I'm running the better work on this. Uh, 1804 LTS. We're doing that. We're rocking that with a Ryzen 1700. As always, 16 gigs of RAM, 980. This should run. And you know what? It runs great. It works great out of the box. And I'm only kind of kidding. Actually, I'm 100% kidding because it, uh, even though it does function, no problems with it whatsoever. There are no options to adjust resolution or run it in a window. So you better like, uh, in my case, A, you better have something that can push 3840 by 2160. Fortunately, the old crusty 980 pulled that off. And you better like running full screen on whatever monitor it decides to launch on because there's no windowed option. Wah, wah. Performance? Mm, I'm guessing it's running around 60 at 2160. Fuck if I know because it doesn't work with Steam Overlay. Good going on that. It's kind of impressive. Um, it looks nice for a nice looking mobile game. And uh, let's talk about controls. It's WASD. It's laid out logical. It's rebindable. There's nothing to complain about. You're looking at it and you're like, oh, it's like ZAD or anything like that. And you're like, yeah, it everything you would expect except for default middle click doesn't allow you to move around on the map. And I don't know why I thought that should be there, but I kind of did. Not dinging anything for that. But you'll get three chairs, but I'm going to have to ding you one. Should ding you two for that resolution thing. No windowed mode. And really? Overlay? What is this? 2014? Well, sorry, 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 sorry to piss on your parade, Ven, but there is in fact a windowed mode, and you can't adjust the resolution. It does the Victor Vran thing, where if you put it in window mode, you have to like manually expand the window, and then we'll just uh, adjust the resolution. <laughs> Let me break this news we heard. Where's that hidden? Because it sure as hell under display options. It absolutely yeah, is on display untick, options. Yeah, you just untick the full screen thing. I didn't see yeah. it, baby. Yeah, the, well, well, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a hot second. Does it launch on Fedora 24, 64-bit with the i7 6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti? Yes. Yes, it does. Performance-wise, Ven is correct. Steam overlay doesn't really work on this, so you can't really tell how it's performing. At 1080, it's fine at UHD. I thought it was a little chuggy, but that may have just been me. Maybe it, maybe I'm doing too many of the drugs. Um, but the performance is fine. Graphics, yeah. So UI scaling, number one. Number one. Um, all the text is super tiny if you launch it on a UHD monitor. You gotta, you gotta manually adjust the UI scaling and don't put it in window mode afterwards, otherwise the UI gets hyper cramped. Didn't have that problem out of the box. Yeah. UI scaling was correct. Uh, yeah, for me it was set to 1x, I had to switch it to uh, 2x. Hmm. Um, yes, so full screen though is a little weird though, because you got two options. You have full screen and exclusive. And if you untick either of those, it goes into a Windows mode. So you can't have any of those polygamous uh, rev resolutions. You got to be exclusive. You only have you only have the one. Um, and yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Graphics wise, yeah, it's it looks about as good as any given strategy game done in the past five six years. Uh, controls, yeah, you uh, left click to select, right click to go do things, and was to um, move around. And sometimes right click has an additional context thing. Um, if you're if you're uh, clicking on the individual units on the bottom right hand side, if you're watching the video, um, right clicking uh, right clicking one of those guys will just select all of the units of that class. Um, so for uh, for the technical aspect of the chair position, I'll give it four chairs. Everything seems to work. 
on Solus with the GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600. It launches just fine. It comes with something called, by default, it uh, sets it to automatic V-Sync. I couldn't tell what it does differently to regular sync to V-Blank. Because, yeah, according to the uh, NVIDIA little overlay thing, since the Steam overlay wasn't working, I just went to the NVIDIA drivers like, yeah, put the thing on screen. And, uh, yeah, no, it was running at 60, so... Yeah, did, did, I guess it that works just fine. Uh, the graphics, yeah, there's no, no resolution options whatsoever. Uh, you have um, full screen and a tick for exclusive full screen, which isn't really a thing on Linux, because that's not how OpenGL and X does full screen windows. But hey, whatever. Uh, it, on my end... The full screen worked as intended. You just unticked it if you wanted to run in a window. And the thing with UI scaling is, I don't know how they're doing it, but if you scale it to 2x, you can actually see like the blurry little blown up pixels. So it, everything looks just a little bit blurry on the UI. The controls, it actually surprised me because it lets you rebind just about everything. So on my end, four chairs. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. Men, men, menu issues aside, it seems to run fine. What about fun, Ven? Did you have fun playing this game? Had a fucking blast, man. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know. What are you talking about? I'm talking about how much fun I had with this <laughs> game, Jordan, because it was delightfully generic as hell. It kind of went like this. Build shit. Build more shit. Explore. Try to keep people happy. Colonize another area. Build more shit. And you're two hours in wondering what the fuck you should be doing. At least I was. I'm not a clever man, but we've established that. Two hours in, I kind of feel like I better have the slightest fucking idea what's going on. I didn't. I didn't, Brad. It does have multiplayer, but unfortunately I was only able to check it out at 6.30 p.m. on a Saturday where a whopping 10 people were playing it in the world. That was it. <laughs> That was spread out, too, over, like, nine servers. I guess it's kind of like Civ. If Civ was made with crayons, some glue sticks, and a few extra chromosomes. But if you like games like ZAD, uh, keep playing ZAD. It's a better game. You know, I'm sorry. But I'm not sorry. Northgard left me with nothing more than a frosty hate boner for what it is. And apparently, the MSRP for hate boners is around $29.99. Is it a poorly done game? No. They put some work into it. I want to say mobile. They're going for an art style. It just happens to look a lot like a mobile game. Honestly, if it was like a $10 title, maybe pick it up with a friend if you want to do multiplayer through Steam. Uh, that could be a possibility. But fuck all. It's I talked about this in our pre-pre super shows and was... Getting into it, figuring it out, it's like, this works. Like, all of these games work. And it gives you tutorials, like, hey, this basic shit you've been doing for 30 years is implemented. And, like, that's neat. Then it goes, fuck off, figure out the rest. And like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm building breweries, I'm trying to keep people happy, and... Uh, do, do I go over here? Do, do I build a dock? What do you want me to do, game? Mm. So, yeah. Didn't have a fun time with it. Especially not at that price. I can't recommend anybody picking that up. It's got good reviews, though. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a competently done game, but what, what they've really done is they've taken a 4X game and added some real-time elements to it so you can wait for things to finish. I mean, the waiting reduces as you progress just because you'll upgrade your guys and they can do things faster and you'll have more stuff to do so you're not really paying attention to the clock timing out as your scout tries to clear the next area so that you can colonize it so you can build the buildings to get the resources together to build more buildings so you can get more <laughs> units to adjust your happiness score because if you're Vikings aren't happy, they don't fuck. So that's definitely a thing. Honestly, like this this isn't the sort of lonely fun that appeals to me. At, I mean, at least there's multiplayer, but again, there's not really much in the way of people uh people actually playing this game online. Um I I mean like 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 I said, it's it's competently done. If I sit down and describe how the game works, you'll be like, "Jordan, this is how every other 4X game works." And you'd be right. Um, it doesn't really do anything original, but what it does, it does competently well. I 
just don't really find this sort of game all that entertaining. Like with Civilization, you can get some people and do like couch multiplayer. You could do play by email multiplayer if you're so inclined. There's lots of ways you can make your own fun there. And honestly, I can't find too much wrong with it other than the fact that it's generic Viking game number 87,542. But it it doesn't really do anything special. Um, it there's no there's no real hook for me to get me playing beyond like the hour and change mark. So I mean, I'll g- I'll give it one chair. I don't have an irrational hatred for this game. It's just not really my my jam. Yeah, Jordan's description is uh, you know hate boner aside is the <laughs> uh, is the boner? most fitting. <laughs> no, Ven had the hate boner, but uh, yeah, it's uh, real time four X exponentially. Hook. Yes, exponentially increasing timers and costs for exploring. It's like, oh, you want to take over this uh, particular area of the map? You have to uh, pay even more than what you did last time. But you're going to be waiting, and you're going to be waiting a lot. But I don't feel like that's a bad thing with this game specifically. See, back in the day, there was one strategy game that I really didn't hate, which was Age of Empires. I actually really enjoyed my time playing that game because I got to take my time, I got to do things at my own pace, and the game didn't really punish me for that. And this one seems to be very much along the same veins. Uh, You have time to do everything. You gather the wood you need, you gather the food you need, you do whatever you need to do, and when you're good and ready, you get to go and do the, the quest that finishes the level. And that's great. I actually kind of like that so much so that it's uh well i guess it's a good thing that 2019's just started because it's a strategy game that i don't hate so as far as i'm concerned it gets three chairs because it's a strategy game that i don't hate that's it (laughs) yeah Uh, mr uh, mr foxdog and i were talking about this on uh, thursday after we were done streaming borderlands he found it just too generic and boring he he described it as a game that tries to do a lot of things and doesn't do any of them particularly well i don't really see that uh but foxy is more into that sort of strategy building 4x game stuff than i am you can watch him play like surviving mars on his mm. channel and stuff like that i don't, I don't know do you got, do you got any other final thoughts say, before this we is go one to of the biggest things i saw you know after i get done writing everything then i always go for uh like confirmation bias and it's like all right do the steam page and let's mm-hmm. see what everyone else said <laughs> pretty much what everyone said you know the people who like it like what it does for the same reasons people like me i'm like just like it i'm like it it's taking too long for anything to happen and i mean i think like within the first hour i'm not saying i should have like a mega viking zilla machine running around killing things but i should be doing more than try to keep motherfuckers happy <laughs> i mean i mean the, the, that deal that dlc is incoming mecha viking zilla <laughs> <laughs> but yeah happiness in this game is a resource like any other and it's actually really easy to cheese it because winter starts and it's like organize a feast and all of a sudden all of the production and the happiness raise and it's like oh so i could just outright negate the whole winter thing how come you can't Neat. drink reindeer piss <laughs> you absolutely maybe can. you can <laughs> I, I i don't see anything in the game that says you can't drink reindeer piss we researched that that would make some people extremely happy in that particular area 